Hello and welcome back to the Naked Marriage Podcast. We are Dave and Ashley Willis, and we are coming to you live from South Lake, Texas, the marriage capital of the world at the Exo Marriage Center here. And um, we want you guys to come visit us. You can actually come to South Lake and you can get coffee at the amazing Exo Press, sit and do your work, hang out, whatever, and you can witness the podcast. Like right now, we have a live audience out there. We're waving at them if you're watching online and they are graciously listening to us. By the end of the day, they're, they're gonna not love our voices, but they're out there and we're excited. And um, we want you to be part of it. So if you wanna be part of it, just go to exomarriage.com, get more information about our location. We'd love to have you here. But before we dive into today's episode, which I'm so excited about, I wanna share a recent review. And this is from Kyle K 82 and it says, informative and insightful. And it says, very informative and insightful. Just recently discovered this podcast, but loving it already. Keep up the great work. Well, thank you so much, Kyle K 82 for leaving that. If you all love this podcast, if you have been listeners for a long time, the very best way that you can show your love for the Naked Marriage Podcast is by leaving a review. It lets others know about it and um, and just share it with your friends. We love it. Thank you guys. Yeah, it helps people discover it and it encourages us. It also gives us feedback. Like some, yes. some of the, the reviews have said, hey, the way the ads break in is abrupt and yes. you guys work on that. And, and we, we are working yeah, on that. Yeah, we listen to that yeah. and it made adjustments. So thank you guys. For, for sharing um, your feedback. And so we, we really do appreciate it. We're excited about today. Today is a huge day for us because mm-hmm. it is the launch day of our new book, Married Into the Family, The Not-So-Secret Guide to In-Law Relationships. This book has been um, just kind of on our hearts for years and years and years because as you maybe have heard us talk about, like this is an area that, that was a real struggle for us in the early years of our marriage. And then people from all over the world write us often about in-law relationships and the struggles that they're facing. And there just aren't that many resources out there about it. And so we have prayed and planned for a long time about creating a resource. And it's finally come together. We're thrilled with how it's come together. And you can get it today is a, is a, is a book, ebook, audio book. We had so much fun recording the audio book. Uh, so I encourage that edition specifically because I do think that it was just, I don't know, it was meaningful to be able to record it. Yeah. Uh, and it over was. the next few weeks, we're going to talk about themes from the book because a lot of folks, a lot of folks have had struggles in these areas, or maybe it's not even a struggle, but you just want to plan ahead for uh, people marrying into your family. Oh, you want to continue to grow in this area in your life. It's not just for people who are in crisis by any means. All of us have an, a need to to have a a wise understanding of in-law relationships. So we're going to start today with what is God's plan for in-laws? Well, we're going to dive in right now. Let's go. Well, we are excited to be talking about the topic this week and for the next few weeks, and that is the topic of in-laws, because as we have hinted in past seasons, this is something very near and dear to our heart. It is a huge part of some of the hurdles that we had to overcome early on in our marriage. And we know in the work that we do that in-law relationships can be like one of the biggest blessings in someone li- someone's life, uh, in a married couple's life, but it can also be one of the hardest things to deal yeah. with in a married couple's life. And so we wrote a whole book on it, right, sweetie? We did, and it's out today. And yes. we're so excited about the book. It's called Married Into the Family, The Not-So-Secret Guide to In-Law Relationships. And this is one of those resources that's been kind of years in the making. I would say decades. Decades in the making. Decades in the from making. From our own yes. experience and from our own desire to help people navigate the the very, very sometimes tricky feels like a minefield at times, um, area of in-law relationships, but not to approach it with fear, but to approach it as a blessing that that God wants us to have Mm -hmm. healthy, thriving relationships with with our in-laws. Yes. Um, But I think we need to understand as we approach this topic, what God's plan for in-laws is really about. What is Mm -hmm. his idea? What is his plan for a thriving, multi-generational family? And a family that when people are marrying into your family, they're a blessing to you. You're a blessing to them. When you're marrying into a family, you know, you're a blessing to those, those, those parents as well. But to also realize that when you get married, you're not just marrying into a family, you are starting a new family. Right. And your first priority, your first loyalty has to be to your spouse at that point. You still love your parents and honor your parents and your siblings and all of that. But your spouse is your first priority, and that is your primary family from that moment on. That's the way God designed it. And I feel like that's the one principle that kind of confuses people yes. and frustrates them. And if, they, if you don't understand that, then all the in-law relationships are going to be, they're going to be off balance because sort of the hierarchy of your loyalties are going to be off balance. 
This is so true. And this is something that I don't believe is talked about enough in premarital counseling, not only for the married couple or the soon to be married couple, but also for the parents, because I think a lot a lot of times parents, they just don't go into their kids getting married thinking like, I'm going to have to shift things like and that was kind of our story. I think that and I won't like out, you know, people by names, but a lot of the struggle came to, um, you know, parents getting excited about a wedding but forgetting there's going to actually be married right, children with their right. own new family in the end. Not meaning they're, you're cutting off ties, obviously, but that that it shifts and changes right. and it Some needs to. things will to. change. It's supposed to change. Exactly. And where, where I think a lot of couples feel this the most, and this is definitely our story too, is like when holidays come, when that first holiday comes. And I was actually just talking to a friend of mine the other day because we were talking about this whole, the in-law dynamics, in-law relationships. And she said, um, she'll never forget it that uh, she was sitting down with her in-laws, who she loves and respects so much. And she said, and, um, and, and I think like the parents started saying, okay, we're about six months away from Christmas. Here's what we want Christmas to look like. And we expect you to drive over here and over here and see all these family members and do this and that. And um, her and her husband had talked about this because they're like, it's going to have to shift. And her husband looked at his dad and he said, dad, you know, it's not going to be able to be exactly the same with us, but you guys go do that. We'll, we're, we're probably going to be able to go to maybe one of those things with all of our family, but we also have my wife's family to consider. And his dad got so angry. He stood up from family dinner and walked out. Yeah. And it walked so out. unfortunate. Like huffing I mean, and, and puffing. And so immature. I know. And it's like, again, but he's coming from the wrong mentality. Exactly. He thinks like, no, your loyalty's to me. I'm your your like, father and like this is the way it's always been right and and i think sometimes we have in our own mind as we grow this vision of what we want our own family legacy to be right and we picture this hallmark moment of like all of the the children and grandchildren gather around, gather around and, and whenever we ask well, yeah when, whenever we ask they're just gonna <laughs> just run to us and and yeah that's a sweet thought yeah but what you're doing is you're 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 putting these exp expectations and parameters on on people that just they're not realistic. They're not realistic. And like in talking with my friend and we totally can relate to this, too. It's not practical and it runs you ragged because you're going to end up letting everyone down anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like you're just trying to please all these different family members and their opinions on what you should do around these holidays and where you should be and what time you should be there. Literally, you're going to just be exhausted. And she said, you know, so that that father in law just to follow up, he went outside kind of had a moment and um but then he quickly realized like i need to i need to grow up a bit about this and he yeah, came back yeah. in and he respected the boundary that his son put in place but it took that young couple having you know the wherewithal and the courage to put that boundary in place and they they tell this day they've been married you know at least a decade they have really good relationships with all of their in-laws but she said but it's always in every new season, like when kids, like when grandkids come, it's always a little touchy. It's always a little awkward. But you as a married couple, no matter how long you've been married, no matter how old you are, you have the power to set those boundaries. And I know for us personally, and we've shared this a little bit, but we'll, we can go into more detail kind of in this series. It took us getting professional help. Yeah, it really we, we did. Needed, it, it took a counselor to it kind of help actual us counselor. Yeah. have the words and the tools because we we just were not prepared. At we all. were not equipped to have these conversations like we were so taken off guard we we wanted to honor everyone involved but we felt right. like we were put in these no-win situations and uh, he handed us a book called boundaries by mm -hmm. doctors john townsend and henry cloud um which you know was one of the books that inspired this new book that we've written yes. married into the family that kind of applies it all specifically to these important in-law relationships and it, it really helped us so much and Boundaries are a loving thing. It's not a punishment yes. for people. It's not saying like, oh, we're going to punish you with these limitations. But really, it's 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 just defining reality in a way that everybody can win and everybody can thrive. Mm -hmm. And we we didn't know how to do that at first. And it created more tension. It created more stress. And that book helped and counseling helped. And and oftentimes it will take that. It will take a counselor sitting down with you and saying, all right, here's here's the way that it can look. And here's some things to consider. And that really, really helped us. It helped us a lot. It did. I'm telling you, once we started doing, you know, coming up together as a couple, we had to come up with, well, what boundaries exactly need to be in place? And then, you know, something we learned a long time ago and that we pass on and really kind of... Um, we really believe in this is that 
let, let's say if it's your family, okay, that is the one really causing the strife and really kind of trying to have a power grab, you know, kind of in the relationship, it's really important that you are the one. I mean, you can have your spouse with you, but you are the mouthpiece that delivers right, the needed right. boundary and has that conversation. It's, it's great to have your spouse right there with you. And you and your spouse need to collectively decide on what these boundaries need to be. But it's important that you are that mouthpiece. And you're probably thinking, well, why? And, um, you know, maybe one of you is better at confrontation than the other, but it's really important that you do it because your parents are going to give you a lot more grace if they disagree with it at first or if they have issues with it than they would your spouse. And it kind of, if they already kind of are, are at odds with your spouse or maybe are blaming them for the boundary, it's important that you're like, no, 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 we are in unity establishing this boundary. Yeah. And, um, and, and I know for me personally, like with my own parents, that was hard for me because I'm not a confrontational person. Well, you're a pleaser by I'm nature. I'm a people pleaser by nature. Yeah. And I've had to really grow in that. I've gone to counseling personally for that. And it's people pleasing on the surface sounds like it's not a bad thing, but it, it really can mess with you and it can really mess with your relationships and it can cause you to have these really um, codependent and unhealthy relationships. And I remember in our counseling uh, sessions, our counselor was like, you can do this. Like you and Dave together go and then just talk in the most loving way possible in the calmest way possible and put these boundaries in place. And you don't do it all at once necessarily, but just kind of like take it, you know, if, if the holiday is a good opportunity, do it then. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, just take it a little at a time. And, um, and it was really hard and emotions were very raw. And, um, and I, I remember feeling like, is this going to be worth it? Because I feel like my heart is just being ripped in two because I love my parents and I, I love my husband so much. And I just, I feel so torn, but you know, I just knew that biblically, this is what God calls us to do. And when every yeah. time we would pray about this and we would lovingly establish this and remember that this is out of love, this is not out of control. In fact, this is trying to make sure that no one is trying to control that we're just yeah. trying to all be adults here. Um, and, and the more I remembered that and, and knowing that Dave is with me in this, it really helps so much. I mean, it, it changed our relationship with all of our in-laws. It's, it's made them so much healthier, so much more enjoyable for everyone. Right, sweetie? I mean, it really yes. is. It's just a wonderful so, thing. Yes, it really has. And that's that's the goal, guys. The goal isn't just to, to like eliminate people from your life. The goal is to is to work towards having healthy, healing relationships yes. with everybody involved. And so how do we do that? I think, first off, when someone marries into your family, to recognize that you, as as a parent, a, a parent, a father, mother-in-law, you have such immense power to either be a blessing or a burden to that person. Yep. And just decide up front, we are going to be a blessing. We are going to love this person. We're going to accept them into our family. We're going to celebrate them. Um, we're going to honor uh, their family. Mm -hmm. And we're going to honor their, you know, their traditions and where they're coming from. We're going to be a blessing. When you marry into a family, do the same thing. Say, like, I've got such immense power to be a blessing or a burden to say, I want to honor my my spouse's family. I want to honor their family culture, their traditions, um, even the, the things that are different from, from me. I want to learn. I want to grow in those areas. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just want to be an encourager and I want to be a blessing. When, when they see me walk in the door, I want them to smile because yes. they know that I'm there as a peacemaker, as somebody who is an honoring person and to do your best to do that. And that comes back to what this, this episode is about, God's plan for in-laws. And when you look at scripture over and over again, we're called to be peacemakers, not doormats, not to let people walk all over us, but peacemakers. Yeah. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Bible has a lot more to say about that. And the Bible gives us some great examples of healthy in-laws from the beginning and also some unhealthy examples. For it sure. shows us, I think about Moses. Moses was, um, he had a really healthy relationship with his his father-in-law, Jethro, even though these two men came from vastly different backgrounds, they were different races. Um, Mo Moses was a Jewish man. Jethro was, uh, was an African man. Mo Moses married uh, an African woman. And, and Jethro and Moses had in this, with this intercultural family now formed this deep mutual respect for one another. Mm -hmm. But, um, brother, you know, brothers and sisters-in-law, can be part of the issue. Moses' mm -hmm. brother and sister, Aaron and Miriam, they were not accepting of his wife. And God 
God reckoned with them. We mm-hmm. see God stepping in yeah. angry at Aaron and Miriam for not accepting Moses's wife because they didn't approve of her. They wished he would have married somebody else. And you might have those thoughts sometimes. Oh, I wish my brother, sister, son, daughter would have married somebody else. Listen, that's that's a, a thought you need to move past quickly because once that person is married into your family, then they are that is sacred. That is a bond right. that God has created and we are called to love, to accept, and to celebrate that person. I think about Ruth and Naomi in the Bible. Um, Ruth caring for her mother-in-law even after her Ruth's husband was dead and now she had no legal obligation at all. Naomi wasn't even technically her mother-in-law at that point. But Ruth had a commitment to her out of respect for her own husband who had passed and and uh, and her mother-in-law, Naomi. And God blessed that. God blessed that level of love and commitment. And when we have love and commitment to, to our families, our spouse's family, God honors it. Mm-hmm. He just honors it. Even if that, that person, we're, we're committed to a person when they're being difficult to love. Naomi, the Bible, like she was in a season where she'd lost a lot. She was bitter. Mm-hmm. The, I mean, the Bible tells us she was a bitter person she was you know difficult to love and yet ruth pursued her with commitment and with love and loved her through that and god honored that Mm -hmm. and uh and and ruth became a mother and grandmother of of kings you know Mm -hmm. because of the way that she she honored so we can learn so much both good examples and bad examples from scripture but what it really all comes down to is choose to be loving choose to be forgiving choose to be committed to, to your spouse, to your spouse's family, but also have the courage when necessary to put healthy boundaries in place to make sure that everyone involved knows that like the way that God has ordered things, a marriage has to be the first loyalty. Right. So never try to put a husband and a wife against each other. When your son or daughter marries someone, it is sacred and you cannot do anything to try to separate them. Now, I'm not saying overlook abuse, those kinds of things. If you see abuse happening, you might have to stage an intervention and say, listen, you need to get safe. There are some things happening here that are really, really unhealthy. But when it's just personality differences, or I don't like the way he does that, or that she does Mm -hmm. that, um, you've you've got to navigate that so carefully. And most of the time, you're going to have to bite your tongue and just just love and support them and help them grow in their marriage, because that marriage is sacred. They've created a new family, a new covenant, and we have a responsibility to to support that. It's so true. And I think, too, as the adult married children, we need to remember not to pin our families of origin against each other. Yes. And I think I, I see this so many times where it's like maybe one spouse feels like their their family is just better than their spouse's family. And so they will favor their family. They'll favor their family every holiday. They'll favor their family on vacations, like spending vacation time. Like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't go on vacation with your family because we're spending our vacation time, you know, with my family. And and this really causes jealousy between the two families. Um, when when kids eventually come along, it can really cause issues with who sees the grandkids. And so we want to do whatever we can as adult married children to really not pin our families yes. against each other. Yes. And that means like if you know something about like your spouse's family, you just don't go and tell your family about it, okay? Like don't go spreading rumors and and gossiping about your family or just being negative about them. And I'm not talking about like really deep concerns that like affect you, but I mean just like little nitpicky things. It just perpetuates really um, an environment of negativity. Uh, It really gives your family license to talk bad about them because you set that tone with your own family on whether or not they can talk about your spouse badly, whether or not they can talk about your spouse's family badly. And so if you open that door, it's really hard to close that door. It it really is. You can close it. Absolutely. But don't open that door. Okay. Don't open that door. If you've already opened it and it's like, there's this kind of us against them mentality, then I would suggest going to see a professional counselor and learning how to reset that. And even, even going to your own family and saying, listen, I made a huge mistake here because now I've made it seem like it's okay to talk badly about my husband, my wife and their family, whatever. But it's not. And I wouldn't want my spouse doing that about me or you guys. Would you? Would you want yeah, that? And just really put it that way and say, like, we need to have a spirit of of restoration, a spirit of unity and um, a spirit really of, of forgiveness and also humility. Like we really have to humble ourselves. And we need to remember this, too, that no matter what our opinions are of our family or our spouse's family, we are not that exact family. We're a new family. 
and we're going to do things in maybe a new way. Some of the things might be similar, but there's probably going to be a lot of things that are our own way of doing things. And that way of doing things, whether it's raising children, how we celebrate holidays, whatever it is, it might not look like either one of your families, but that's between you, your spouse and God. And so we just need to really keep that perspective. Man, that is so good. And so if you've made those mistakes, and all of us have made some mistakes in these areas, none yes, of us are yes, perfect. Yes, definitely. Then really kind of do a self-inventory. You know, Jesus said, don't look at the speck of sawdust in someone else's eye when you've got a plank in your own eye, mm -hmm. which is just a, a funny, really, way of, of saying, like, listen, don't be a, an expert at picking out what someone else is doing wrong when we, we've all got junk. And yeah. so do a self-assessment and think, what have I done to not promote peace? Mm -hmm. What have I done maybe to dishonor my own spouse or my spouse's family? And then to really apologize for that, uh, like Ashley was saying, to turn from it and to, to just start again. And this this new book, Married Into the Family, uh, I think this could be such a helpful resource to you in all of this and having a new beginning um, mm -hmm. with your in-laws, a new beginning, maybe in, even in your own marriage, if you've allowed family relationships to kind of damage or come between you and your spouse. Mm -hmm. um, and do us a favor and, and share this episode. We, we always say that. I really though feel like with these in-law episodes in particular, there are so many people that are struggling in this, these areas and often in secret, in silence, they feel isolated. They feel like nobody sees them. Mm -hmm. And we know from experience when you're going through these issues, if it, it can feel so isolating. It can feel like the weight of the world's on you um, when you, you're at odds even with your own families. Mm -hmm. We want those folks to know that they are seen, that God yeah. is with them in this, and that there's hope. And they're, it's not, they're not always going to feel discouraged the way they are right now. Right. These episodes and the, the book, I think, could be such a helpful resource for them. And so by sharing these episodes on social, or if you know anyone in your life that is going through these issues in particular, to just send them a text or a message and say, hey, I listened to this episode. I think this would really be encouraging to you. Just know that I'm, I'm praying for you in this area. You're going to get through this. That's right. And we hope you join us for every single one of these episodes. And like Dave said, we always appreciate it when you share it. And let us know what else you would like to hear about this. And also, if it's helping you, we, we love you know, hearing how it's making a difference in your life. But we hope to see you next time. 